Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, uh, I'm going to be continuing on for a, uh, uh, this uh, message uh, along the same lines what I shared uh, last week. Again, you guys know what the, uh, the uh, prophetic vision is, changing the atmosphere, and so I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about that, but it's going to be more directed at changing the atmosphere of the church. Okay, of the church, because the problem with what's going on around us nowadays is everybody's too comfortable. Everybody's too comfortable, it just seems like. It's like it's like the Holy Spirit's got to start doing something in us to change, to shake us up, to, to make things different, because I think the church has kind of just got lackadaisious over the last few years, especially in America, especially in places where we have a lot of stuff, but... We just believe that God is going to be doing some more changing even this year because we can uh, use it. Amen? So when I uh, shared earlier this month, I talked about what we need to do if we're going to be successful at changing the atmosphere in our homes, our workplaces, our schools, and especially the church. Uh, the conclusion was that before we can change the atmosphere, we have to change our personal atmosphere first. Before anything can take place on the outside, everything has to change in us first. And it's just not one person that has to change in. I mean, that's a progress. We need to change in every single one of us because none of us are done yet. we got to be changing all the time, all the time, all the time. We've got to keep moving forward all of the time. But we need to change our personal atmospheres first. This would require us, require you, to cleanse and maintain our temples of the Holy Spirit so that he could freely move in and throughout our lives without hindrance. Okay? How many of you know the Holy Spirit wants to move in your life? It's just that we hinder him in making those moves. We do that. It's, our, it's on us. It's our fault. It's our problem because we're the ones that, uh, I mean, what, what are we creating the Holy Spirit to live in? Have we got him a luxurious temple to live in? Or is he living in squalor inside us because of what we take in from the outside? Because of the things we watch, the things we do, the things we say, all those things that come in from the outside, it's polluting your temple, okay? And we have control of everything that comes into this temple, all right? What kind of atmosphere are you creating for the Holy Spirit in you to live? Because that's where he's living. And we need to understand that more than anything else uh, this morning. Uh, This is achieved when we are walking in true unity, love, and holiness with God through his son, Jesus Christ. This is where, again, we're able to maintain the temples of the Holy the temple of the Holy Spirit so that he's able to do those things. People need to understand that when you got saved, okay, the Holy Spirit moved into you, inside of you. Okay, you, you heard that fake word that Pastor Glenn shared. Okay, knocking at your heart. He's not on the outside out here going, oh, oh, Eric, hey, buddy, open up, man, let me in, let me in. He's not out here. This isn't where the Holy Spirit is, all right? We have a misconception about the Holy Spirit thinking that he's outside of us, outside of these buildings, outside trying to get in, right? That's not the way the Holy Spirit works. He's already inside of us. He's already here. Once you accept Christ, you the Holy Spirit's in you. He's going to live there through eternity. The rest of your life, he's going to be there. And we're responsible to make sure he's got a comfortable place to live. Okay? The Holy Spirit's inside of us and he's knocking on our heart. The door of our heart says, let me in. i got to get into those dark places that you're keeping from me. Because you all know you got those dark places you keep from the Holy Spirit. Okay? But he already knows what's in there. He's not, you know, he's not blind. He knows what's in there. He's just waiting for you to open it up and let him in and take care of all that stuff to clean that stuff up. But we got to let him into those places. All those challenges we've overcome, all those sins we've overcome in our life, that's because we opened up those places for the Holy Spirit to enter in and do the work he needs to do. Once he gets that compartment clean, he goes on to another one. Okay, it's like a house cleaner, okay? Go to one room, to the other, to the other, to the other. He's going to clean them up. But guess what? We have to open up the door first so he can do his work, so he can do the job that he needs to do. The Holy Spirit lives inside of us. This is his temple, okay? We're his temple. You're his temple. Uh, this morning, in keeping with the apostolic prophetic theme for 2019, I just want to focus on things that we can do to help in changing the atmosphere 
within the church. Okay, we talked about changing the atmosphere within ourselves last time. I encourage you guys to go back and look at the website and uh, listen to that word. But I want to focus on changing the atmosphere within the church this morning. In this day when churches, uh, the power almost seems to be diminishing as we get further away in time. Okay, you look at society, it's falling apart, it's crumbling. It's because the power of the church that used to be there is kind of getting diminished because guess what? All of the Christians have got the Holy Spirit locked up inside of them and not letting them out. Not letting them out in our workplaces, not letting them out in our schools, not letting them out because society is pressuring us to keep them inside. But guess what? We need to get that from the inside of us out to wherever we're at. This is what the Holy Spirit's trying to do. He'll work in your life, he'll work it, but he still needs to get out into our society, he needs to get out into our church, he needs to get out into our schools. Because every place there's a Christian walking around, the Holy Spirit's there waiting to get out. He wants to get out and affect the people around him. He wants to go down the, the halls of your school, and because I'm letting the Holy Spirit out all over the place, he wants to affect the people in that school. But all the Christians are like, around okay you know i mean i got a few people that work for the school district okay and let me tell you it's hard to let the holy spirit out isn't it because you could lose your job you could theoretically lose your job if you start talking about jesus to somebody they can go and tell you no, you're fired without question okay but this is not the way that god needs things to be he needs it to turn that around and we have to begin to start changing laws we have to begin to start changing rules those things are dictating what the Holy Spirit can do because we should be dictating what we should be doing in society it's the Holy Spirit's job to be doing that and it's up to us to make that happen I hope this message will encourage uh, us to do a better job of changing the atmosphere of our hearts our homes workplaces school and our churches because God wants to move and manifest his power in every aspect of our lives especially in his churches but he wants to be at your workplace. He wants to be in your schools. He wants to be in your house, in your home. He wants to be there. And he wants to manifest his power all over the place. But it's up to us to let him out and to begin to uh, let, let see those things uh, come about. So as we come together uh, with one spirit, soul, and body to truly worship God, we'll see again, see, sense, and experience the Father manifesting his presence among us in a new exciting way. That's why we kind of changed worship this morning, okay? When we come together and worship, this is where it's going to start changing the atmosphere around us. When the churches are all coming together with one spirit, one body, once, and we're all working together, and the Holy Spirit, each one of us working together to, again, build up, build up, and they just explode outside these four walls into the city, into our state, into our country. And if that happened in every single church around the United States, around the world, well, guess what? The Holy Spirit would <laughs> explode all over. We would see things happening like we've never seen happen before. And that's what we're believing God is going to still do. But the church has to get its stuff in order so that we're coming together as one. So when we come together with worship, that's why it's important we worship. That we sing, that we raise our hands, we yell, we scream, we do all those things. We participate in worship. Or why don't you come to church? Just hear a good message from Pastor Mike? Well, of course, that's probably one of the reasons. But really, we come together to worship God. To worship God. That's why we're here, to bring glory to God. So let's go to the Word just for a minute and see what, what that might look like if we all ever can get together on the same page uh, when it comes to the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit, okay? Open your Bibles up to uh, the book of 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles is where I'll be reading from this morning. Now just a little background what's going on here. This is... Uh, uh, right before the dedication of Solomon's temple. Okay, the temple. Okay, you know the temple in Jerusalem? Okay, you know where the mount, uh, the, the dome of the rock thing is that the, the Muslims have put in place there on that ground in Jerusalem? That's God's ground. That's where the temple is. That's where it will be restored. That's where it will be rebuilt when 
it gets closer to the end time. Okay, if you ever do a, a, a study on end time, you know they're going to get putting all these elements together and they're trying to, eventually they're going to build this temple again. This temple again that was destroyed. But it's on the same place. It's God's country. That's God's territory. Israel is God's territory. Do not let anybody tell you anything different. You go throughout the Bible, okay, and guess what the Bible says? This Israel is your territory. All of it is yours, every bit of it, from here to there. Okay, so when you hear all this stuff going on in the Middle East, forget about it. Okay, because you've got to keep it in a biblical perspective. The Jews own all of that Middle East, all that land. It's theirs. That Temple Mount is theirs. It's not the Muslim. Okay, it's theirs. And eventually it's going to come to a head where uh, no telling what's going to take place, but it's to be one of those Holy Spirit explosions that <clears throat> causes something to take place in Jerusalem. Uh, we see it step by step already taking place, okay? When our president uh, made Jerusalem the capital again, recognized Jerusalem, that's huge. In the spirit, that was huge, okay? When he uh, just recently said, okay, the Golan Heights is, is uh, Israel, it, that's huge, okay? You don't understand when things are happening in the like that, when they're gaining ground back, that's God moving in that territory, and we need to Thank God for it. As a matter of fact, let's thank God for what our president's doing in, the, in Israel because it's huge is what's going on. Don't ever think that it's not meant to be because it's amazing what's taking place. But anyway, 2 Chronicles uh, uh, verse 5, 13 through 14. Again, this is the dedication of the temple, the temple, the first temple. They've probably been building it. The, the Israelites have been building it for 100 years, whatever time it took them to build it. Put all this stuff together, you go back and look at the Old Testament, there's, there's like exact, exact things they had to do, things you have to put together. All these things had to take place before this temple could be dedicated. This is where they're at uh, at this point. So they're all basically together. They've all been working together. They've all been sticking together as one group of people. During this time, they've been right there at Bill make this happen. And so this is kind of what's taking place the ark of the covenant they brave they, they got it all built the buildings there right the ark of the covenant where well, what's inside of it right now is just the ten commandments the the place the ten commandments have been taken inside they've been placed in the holy of holies be, between the cherubims okay the gold cherubims and all this stuff you ever did a study of the temple uh, look it up it's a good it's a good uh look up uh when you're uh on uh youtube next time just look up solomon's temple there's a really good little five-minute uh, video clip of uh, what the temple is in there, what, what it's made of, and how it's put together and stuff. So I encourage you to do that uh, sometime. But uh, this is what's taking place. Second Chron Chronicles 5, verses 13 through 14. This is what it says. <clears throat> Indeed, it came to pass when the trumpeters and the singers were as one to make one sound to be heard in praising and thanking the Lord. And when they lifted up their voice with the trumpets and cymbals and instruments of music and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endures forever. That the house, the house of the Lord was filled with a cloud so that the priests could not continue ministering because the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the house of God. That's what was taking place at that time. This was the dedication of the temple. And right after this, Solomon goes through and dedicates the temple. The temple. And uh, again, I encourage you to read Set Chronicles all about that. I don't have time to go all the way through it, but it's a great study in itself. But can you imagine a, what that service must have been like? Okay, all these people, all the priests, all the Levites, all the people are all together. It's all in white robes. It's all inside the temple, and this is, this is all together. They was, they was playing trumpets. They was cymbal. They had singing on it. It's all as one, okay? That's really one of our goals in worship is we it should be one voice, one sound, one thing going up to the holy, up to, up to God, because that's really what worship is. Because that's, a, it, I mean, there's certain times you'll reach that point in worship, but it's very rare that you reach that point. There's everybody's experienced at least one time where you just, felt the holy spirit was it was just so intense that 
you just knew everybody was on the same page and you was breaking through all of that stuff and we were in the throne room of God. Okay? But it's something that doesn't take place that often. We need to be having it taking place more often because when we come in, we need to be worshipers. We're worshipers in the house of God. And the more we all worship, well, guess what? The closer we actually get to experiencing that move of God that we're trying to achieve. That's what we're trying to get to. That's where we're trying to get to when we worship. So I want to encourage everybody, when we come together to worship, worship. Sing, raise your hand, shout, yeah, whatever it is, whatever God puts on your heart. Because it's time to touch the hem of God's garment, to be in the present, in his presence. That's what we're trying to get to. But it's hard for me to imagine what that one would have been like. To where the where a a actual cloud comes into the room, into the temple. That was so thick. He said it's so thick that the, that some verse of the Bible says that the, the priest couldn't even stand to minister. Basically, they couldn't even get up. It was just you know, oh, everything stopped. Okay, because the presence of God, that's when he moved in. I said, I'm here. This is my temple. This is my house. This is from now on where you'll worship me. And from there on out, that's what they had to do all the animal sacrifice. That's they were had to do all of the things to where you get in contact with God. Okay, because you had to go through that process of the priests and the sacrifice and all that stuff until Jesus came. Okay, which changed it all, which changed it all. And that's when we became the temple of the Holy Spirit. There isn't a building that has nothing to do with it anymore uh, because the Holy Spirit's in each one of his believers now. And so that's where the Holy Spirit's dwell. But uh, the, the priests couldn't even stand to minister. So everyone that was present, they saw, they sensed, and experienced the glory of God in a real, new, and exciting way. How many want to experience the Holy Spirit in a new, exciting way? Something different. Something needs to change. Something's got to, like, break loose. Something's got to happen to cause us to come together with one voice and I want to be on the same page and worshiping uh, God. But like I said, the good news is the same presence and power that already lives in each of us, if we accepted Christ, is already inside of us. The presence of the power of God no longer lives in a temple or a building. Instead, he lives in our hearts. That's where the Holy Spirit lives. This same power, this same power that manifests back in the dedication of Solomon's temple, and the same power that resurrected Jesus from the dead, is the same power that lives in you today. It's the same power that lives in you today. We all have that within, within us. But guess what? It does no good staying inside of us. We want that power to overflow out of us into the environment around us, into the church around us, into our school, into our workplaces. We have to understand and grab hold of this one truth we find in 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. You can go ahead and turn there if you want to. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Uh, and I believe the presence and power of God would be manifesting uh, in every aspect of our lives, unlike anything we've ever experienced before, if you can get hold of this one truth and really understand it. Take it to heart because it's what the Word of God uh, says. And we have to, like, understand this because it's our responsibility to take care of it. So 1 Corinthians uh, 6, 19 through 20. 1 Corinthians 6. 19 through 20. <clears throat> or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? Whom you have found, who you have, whom you have from God, and you are not your own. Okay, you guys understand that concept, right? The Holy Spirit's in you. You're not your own. Anything that happens in your life, okay, you have nothing to do with it. God has everything to do with it. He may have given you the gifts. He may have given you the talents. He may have given you the, the things that you need, okay, but he owns you. He owns you. Everything that happens because of him living in you, okay? That's where it all comes from. That's why we have to give God the glory every time something good happens. Okay, in our lives. And for some, in some cases when bad things happen because the Bible says that all things, all things work together for good for those who love God. 
So it doesn't matter what we're going through in our life. It doesn't surprise God. He knows what's happening. But just understand that everything that's going on in our life, it's for his good. Because we love him. We may not understand it, may not have, may not have figured it out. I'll have to ask him when I see him. But until then, I have to have faith believing that he's in control of my life. Everything I have is because of him. The roof of my, over my head is because of him. The car I drive is because of him. Okay? The ticket that I got for driving on a one-way street last week was because of him. Okay? I'll take it. That's on me. That's on me. But, hey, I got, it happened. But there must have been some good that came from I don't know what it is, but somebody's going to benefit from that ticket. But, but uh, praise God. Anyway, we have to give God the glory for uh, all the things that are happening in our uh, lives. Uh, and uh, the word continues on. And you are not your own. Verse 20. For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body. And in your spirit which are God's. Okay. We have to glorify God in our body and our spirits. Because it's his. He owns us. Okay. So. That's why I say, what are you doing to keep your temple cleansed? What are you doing to keep it in good shape for the Holy Spirit to live in? He's not going to leave, okay? <laughs> he's not going to leave you, do you? If you're not clean, he's not going to leave, but he's going to be waiting for you to clean up what you're doing in your life. And I just say everything has to do with what, what, whatever changes your worldview, whatever changes the way you see things, hear things, okay? It can all afford to be cleaned up. It can all afford to be cleaned up because, again, as human beings, we're lousy human beings. Stuff that goes on in our minds, stuff we think about, stuff we watch on TV, stuff we read, stuff, we, I mean, all the things. Just take, care, just take, when you walk out the door, what you do, okay, it's probably not too appealing to God, okay, if you think about it, okay? He probably thinks, man, what a cesspool these people live in out here. I wish they'd clean up this place. You know, I mean, he's talking in the, in, the, in, the, in the country, in the world as a whole. He has the answer. He's given us the answer. He's given us the Holy Spirit in us. When we accept Christ, we can change the world. It can be heaven on earth if we just do what we're supposed to do. But, unfortunately, the Bible says we've all sinned. We all fall short of the glory of God. Okay, because that's what that means. That's why we need a Savior. That's why we need to be continually, continually cleansing our temples, taking care of what we're putting into our, into our minds, into our hearts, into our bodies for that matter. Our diets suck. People, I'm telling you, our diets are the worst ever. I mean, we've got way too much stuff to go by, to eat, too, too many selections, okay? And guess what? I'm the first to put, oh, man, that chocolate, God, that jelly beans, man, give them to me. Chocolate, ooh, let's have it. Okay, let's party. Yo, hamburgers, pizza. Yeah. I mean, I mean, God created it in a sense. The ingredients go into it. But, you know, you know, when we start getting farther away from the way God created stuff, the worse it kind of gets. It becomes franken food. That's really kind of what we eat. You know, if you aren't looking at the ingredients in your food, if you aren't getting that, you know, it's just franken food. It's all created with, with chemicals and all this stuff. And, you know, God doesn't like it, but he says, hey, it's your choice. You know, instead of 100 years I'm giving you, you're only going to live to your 60. Don't blame me. You know, so, but uh, just that, you know, all those things we put in us. It's, it's, it's the temple of the Holy Spirit. We just need to change the atmosphere going into us. It doesn't happen overnight. I mean, we're all like on the same boat. It's not like, you know, we can all do better in all of those areas, I would think. Amen. So, uh, let's see. So that's for 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. But this is the main truth that every believer must understand if he expects to change the atmosphere in and around them. The Holy Spirit lives inside us, and it is our responsibility to make sure, okay, this is important, this is make sure that he feels like an owner of this temple and not a renter. Okay? He needs to feel like he's the owner of this temple, because he is. Okay? Don't make him feel like a renter, like he's just passing through, like he's visiting. You know, we don't have to keep, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Holy Spirit, come into this room. This stuff kind of is one of my pet peeves. 
we kind of get in these Christianese thinking, and we hear people, oh, Holy Spirit, come. Holy it's like, where's he at? Where's he been? He's not, he's not anywhere. He's here already. He's here. We don't ask him. We're not going to change him to become any different, any faster. Nothing's going to change. We can say, oh, Holy Spirit, manifest yourself. Use me to reach these, you know, different ways. But we get into these, these thinking like the Holy Spirit's this outside force on the outside. It kind of just floats around waiting for us to call him in. Call him Holy Spirit. <laughs> I'm here. What do you want to do? It's not the way he works. But that's what we kind of turn him into. Okay? The Holy Spirit's always in us. And he always wants to get out. But he's so bound up inside of us with all this junk, all this garbage. It's like, man, I got enough stuff to clean up in here. How am I, what, what, how am I doing anything outside of here? So it's up to us to make sure that uh, we're making the Holy Spirit like he's the owner of the temple and not a renter. Once we know and understand we're responsible for keeping the house of the Holy Spirit cleansed, maintain and in order, we can all come together in his power and start helping to create an atmosphere for changing our church. And I'm just not talking Elsinore Christian Center. When I say church, I'm talking about church as a whole. Okay, the church as a whole, the church of Christ is as a whole, is a mess. It's a mess. I mean, I've got uh, churches that are down to, okay, here we go, we're going to do 13 services today and it's going to be one hour, boom, 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 boom. Like, what the heck is that? It seems to me like we're catering more to the soul of people instead of the spirit. Assembly line Christianity is not what God wants. He needs to have time. He needs to have, he needs to work. He needs to work through those things. It's not assembly line. So again, uh, but we get in these habits that are hard to break as a society. And before long, the society is affected by it. And that's kind of what you see happening around us. It's almost like we're getting, we're, we're underwater almost. It feels like a lot of times as far as Christians go. And a lot of cases they are. You know, I was, I was so, oh God, I got so mad about this the other day. <clears throat> last week, last Easter, okay, uh, in Sri Lanka, uh, over, how many people got killed? Over 300 people were killed by Muslim extremists. Okay, all of the news, all the people are talking about it. They always said, oh yes, 300 Easter worshipers were killed in six different places. It got to a point where they just call us Easter worshipers instead of Christian worshipers. These are Christians that are being persecuted. This is Christians that are being killed and slaughtered by the thousands all around the world. But we've gotten to a point in our own country where it's Easter worshipers. No, it's Christians that are under attack from the evil that's in this world, and it needs to be spoken from the rooftop that this is Christians that are under attack, all right? Even our own country, they don't even say it, but Christians are under attack. We're under attack in schools. We're under attack in our workplaces. We're under attack in our, our churches are under attack. Christians are under attack, and the Holy Spirit is the only one that's going to turn that around, but the church has to be the ones that are screaming the rooftop, wait a minute. We're the ones that are being persecuted here. We're the ones that are having our rights taken away. We're the ones that are losing ground just because of the attitude of the country and of the world. And again, it's going to take the Holy Spirit, a mighty move of the Holy Spirit that we're believing for to turn that around, to turn that around because it begins right here in us. We can do our part and we're believing that God is moving around the world and all these other, all these other places at the same time and we're going to see that boom! Holy Spirit explosion that is going to get everything back on track. Okay, let's go. Let's get this done, people. Okay, let's get this let's get this world evangelized because time is getting short. Time is getting uh, short. Uh, so anyway, we need to understand it. Uh, keep uh, our our temples cleansed, maintain in order, so that when we come together in His power and start helping to create an atmosphere for changing our church changing the church as, at large, changing Elsinore Christian Center, uh, changing the church down the street. This is right here. Every one of them in this city, in this country, all need to change because the Holy Spirit needs to be able to move freely through our lives, through our country, through our society. He needs, he needs that freedom to move. And we can only give him that uh, freedom by the way we vote, the way that we uh, make decisions, things like that. We really, it really makes a difference. It really makes a difference. So uh, anyway, understand that when you come to church, 
Okay, when you come to church on Sunday morning, okay, who are you bringing to church with you? Who are you bringing to church with you? You're bringing the Holy Spirit to church with you. Okay, you leave here. Okay, there's nobody in this building. Is the Holy Spirit here? No, he's not here. He's in you. He's in you at home. He's in you at your work. He's, he doesn't stay here. He doesn't say, okay, thanks for visiting me, guys. Appreciate it. Stop by next Sunday. I'll be here all week. Okay. But we think we tie it to a bill, but that's not how the Holy Spirit works. That's not how he does it. You walk out the door. He walks out with you. Okay. Now he's asking you, how many people you bring into church? How many people you bring into church? So the Holy Spirit's saying all week long, hey, you, should, you should say, come to church to the, uh, that person at the cash register or the person at your workplace. That's what your job is. And then you can bring them, but guess what? The Holy Spirit's really bringing them. It's been drawing people in. Now you just say, open your mouth and say, hey, you need to come to church. Man, I got a great church to go to. Come on, let's go. That's what our job is. That's what our job is. But the Holy Spirit doesn't stay here and wait for you to come back next Sunday. Okay. But guess what? He needs you back here next Sunday. These, these, these seats should be full every single Sunday. They should be full every single Sunday because that's the way the Holy Spirit's going to move in our church, in our city, in our lives, is by getting everybody here and say, okay, we've done all the work we need to do all week long. We've kept our, Holy, our, our temples in tip-top shape, and we're right prime for it to just break loose so when everybody comes into these doors, it just, we don't, we don't even need people up here singing. We don't need people. We don't even need this going to happen because we're all on the same page. The Holy Spirit's moving and just, it's like a whirlwind everywhere you go, okay? And then we all come to there's one big giant whirlwind. But now you got that one over the corner, it's just. You know what the Holy Spirit's going to do? Right? That's what it seems like, right? So that's why it's up to us. It's our responsibility to keep the Holy Spirit on the edge. Right on the edge and just ready to just explode everywhere we are. So no matter where we're at, put another Christian there, boom, something happens. Something happens. So that's where we want to see the Holy Spirit move. But guess what? We gotta start here. We gotta start here within each of our own hearts and bring the Holy Spirit to church. Uh, because that's where he wants to be. That's where he wants you to be. Yeah, he likes going to the beach and stuff like that, but he'd better have you at church, guaranteed. I mean, if you ask, okay, God, do uh, you want me to go to the beach this Sunday or should I go to church? Go to the beach. Well, not very, <laughs> I don't know. I think you say, I think you probably better go to church because I need to get recharged. I need to move. I need to work. I need, okay, so. Uh, that's the type of life we need to live as Christians. We need to be living, con continually uh, talking to the Holy Spirit, saying, God, what do you want to do today? What am I going to do about that boss at my work that I just hate and I just loathe and I just want to uh, go talk to him? Go by him to church. <laughs> but, but that's the way we need to be working in our lives uh, every single day. Amen? Uh, but despite what people uh, sometimes think, the spiritual environment of the church does not solely rest on the shoulders of the worship team, the pastors, or the leaders. If we want to improve the spiritual atmosphere of Elsinore Christian Center, then we must all work together with the worship team, the pastors, and the leadership to become a people of prayer, faith, and commitment. We must learn to add our faith to Pastor Jim and Carol's faith while at the same time worshiping and praising God in spirit and in truth. This is where we begin to create, uh, to help create an atmosphere that invites the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit to feel free among us. Because that's really what we want. we want. We want the Holy Spirit to feel free to move among us. We want to see signs and wonders. We want to see miracles. We want to see all of those things. But we can't make it happen. Worshipers can't make it happen. Worship team can't make it happen. Okay, Pastor Jim can't make it happen. The Holy Spirit has to feel free enough to be able to come in and move amongst us because we've done the preparation work. We've done the work that we need to do to get ready for that move when we all come together. Uh, this is where we begin to create that atmosphere to invite the presence and power of the Holy Spirit so he feels free 
to move among us. During our services, the worship team and the pastors are doing their best to encourage an atmosphere of unity, love, faith, expectancy, excitement, enthusiasm, and holiness. That's what they're trying to get us to. Okay, they're trying to get us to help us along that road. Okay, but what ends up happening, if we're all so messed up, we're all so wrecked out, we come walking in here, we're running here, whoa, five minutes late, and, and we're just, oh my God, rush you. Oh, rush. Well, what's the chances that we even have a chance to even tune in to what the Holy Spirit wants to do? So we need to prepare ourselves before we even walk in the doors. We need to prepare our hearts before we even walk in the doors because, again, that's where the Holy Spirit is going to feel free to move among us when we've already done the heavy lifting. And then it doesn't matter what song we sing, how we do it, doesn't matter. One person up here playing a guitar or Pastor Mike's up here singing a solo. We're able to enter into worship because we're ready to enter into worship. Okay? So uh, keep that in mind. You guys all play a very important part in setting the atmosphere, to create the atmosphere. That's why we had the lights down this morning. We had, it was just a little different because it helps create an atmosphere of, oh, we're going to be in the presence of God. We're going to be in the presence of God. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be awesome. This is going to be awesome. That's why you should be coming to church. Okay? But, oh, gosh. I got to go to church again. I could have slept a good two extra hours. No doubt. I just don't know. Oh, dear, I'll be a little bit late today. Oh, man. I might be about 15 minutes later. Or, but we need to make sure we're preparing ourselves before we even get here. If you've got lots of kids and lots of stuff to do, make sure you get it already the night before. Okay, if you ever look at the, the Jewish faith, how they do stuff, they're preparing the day before, before anything ever happens. They've been going through a whole week of preparation this week, uh, the Jewish faith. And for their service that came again yesterday, their Passover, okay? But they do a lot of preparation, and we should be doing the same thing because it gives us time to clean up ourselves along, you know, the stuff we've collected the week. Say, oh, God, forgive me of that, man. Get this out of me. This really sucks. This is bad, bad, bad. The Holy Spirit, get, get, clear, clear me out. And <laughs> clears me out, and I'm able to come and worship him. So that's where God needs us to be. He needs to be on the precipice of the Holy Spirit just exploding in our environment, in our atmosphere, is, uh, is what we're talking about, in our atmosphere. Uh, but the worship team does what they can, the pastor does what they can. It's up to us, the church, to cooperate and participate in this endeavor of helping lift the atmosphere of the worship service. Okay? Uh, from the natural, again, we're trying to go from the natural realm, you guys, we're trying to get out of the day-to-day <laughs> battles going on every day. Because I'll just tell you, the devil's down here. He's just wreaking havoc, man. He's just really messing you up, trying to mess you up. All week long, he wants to mess you up. Okay? That's where he's at. And right when you're walking, he's still down here wanting to mess you up. Because just because I'm here doesn't mean the devil left. Okay? I mean, yeah, I can take authority orders and get out of here, devil. He's going to leave. But guess what? If I bring him in with me. Yeah, thanks for inviting me. He's going to wreak havoc through the whole service. He'll be in here messing up the songs and messing up the overhead, messing up the sound and all of these distractions. But all we're trying to do is going, okay, we've got to get out of this. We've got to stop this, and we've got to get from this natural realm into the spiritual realm. And rest in you. That's where you want to get to. That's why we come together because we want to get to that place where we're at peace in the chaos that's going on in our lives. Because the devil is wreaking havoc on our lives. And we don't want him to continue to wreak havoc on our lives. The Lord showed me a picture while I was preparing this word. What's happening is, you're familiar with loggers, how they used to get logs from up in the mountains, okay? They had just cut all these logs down, and to get them down into the bottom where they could turn them into wood, stuff like that, they would just put them into the river and run them down these big, giant rivers. But what happened is, these logs would get haywire, and they'd get all caught, they'd get all, like, messed up, and there'd be a log jam. 
And what ended up happening, they may not even know there's a log jam down there. And they're sending log down, log down, log down, log down. And this log jam is getting bigger and bigger. And it's kind of like where the church is today. There's this Holy Spirit log jam that just, that's just sitting up here. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. And you're seeing less and less of the Holy Spirit flowing, which is like the river. That's where the river comes from. And we're like the logs that are in there that are all like stuck and hung up, all piled up and all like wrecked out of these, off on the, uh, the, the shores. And it's getting longer and longer. It's not now 10 miles long. It's 20 miles long. And God's saying, you guys, you got to get together. You got to break this log jam. You got to break this log jam so I can move. So I can move like I'm supposed to move. And that's what we're in the process of doing when we're cleaning out our temples and we're taking care of uh, uh, these things in our lives. One log goes out. One, another one, another one, another one. We just see one or two getting out every now and again. But guess what? The Holy Spirit wants every single one of them to break loose all at once. So boom! It just blows down into the valley, wiping everything out along its way and moving like he's never moved before this is where he wants to be this is what he wants to do the holy spirit wants to mess your lives up in a different way he wants to do it the way it's supposed to be messed up because he's tired of seeing the world messing your lives up okay but guess what we're responsible we're the ones that are responsible for this temple we allow the stuff in and we're the ones that throw the stuff out too okay what happens in between, we need to be careful what we are doing to, again, glorify God in our workplaces, in our churches, in our lives. Because he wants that log dam to be uh, broken free so that he can actually change the atmosphere of the church. The change will not happen overnight, but we have to start somewhere. Quickly, I'm just going to go through five strategies that we can employ to help break this Holy Spirit log jam in our lives, okay? First one, we must create an atmosphere for true worship, okay? That's the Second Chronicles 5, 13 through 14, what we read earlier. That's what took place, okay? Everybody was on the same page. They had all been working together. It all came together with one, as one, okay? And the Holy Spirit was able to move in a very real way where he came in and... A cloud where you couldn't even, I mean, you can imagine the priests couldn't imagine. What about the normal people, man? They must have been flat out like, oh, man, I'm going to die here. Okay? But this is where the Holy Spirit wants to be. But we have to create an atmosphere for true worship. To create an atmosphere where the, Holy, where the Spirit of God is released in its fullness will require all the musicians, all the singers, all the worshipers to be praising and thanking God as one. Okay, this is what our goal needs to be. We need to be as one when we come together on Sunday mornings during our worship. Okay, we need to all participate. We all need to be part of what God is doing. I just can't have half the people over here. I can't even see that screen up there. I don't care if you can't see the screen. I don't care if you can't read. You can still worship because I make up words. God's happy with that. He doesn't care. He says, oh, Lord, thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Lord, and, and be part of what God is doing during our worship services because again we're trying to get as close to him as we possibly can through all of our messed up junked up lives okay and that's what we're trying to do so the less junked up messed up lives we have when we walk in the door the closer we're going to get to him when we come together right that makes sense right uh obviously this is the goal we should be striving for every time we worship uh when we come into the house of uh, the lord we should feel a powerful sense of reverence Holiness, awe, power, love, and unity all rolled into one. Not because of what took place in the building, but because we're here. We're here. We should be able to sense and feel the awesome power of God. But guess what? That takes work on our part. All right? Because he's here. He's right here. He's waiting for you to just open up and surrender. We heard that song, Surrender, that song, that awesome song. I love that song. Surrender, bowing down. That's what it's all about. Trying to get us to that place to Okay, God, do what you need to do and take care of business and uh, let's worship the Lord. Uh, then when uh, true worship explodes together in our hearts and awesome and powerful things are bound to happen. If we really want to see the glory of God manifest in this place, then we have to create an atmosphere 
for true worship. But we ought to be careful that it also brings honor to God while we're worshiping. We just don't want to be some crazy, maniacal, mega maniac people, you know, because you know, it's just about it's just pretty far out worship sometimes. So, uh, but the Holy Spirit is the one that's in charge of that stuff. As long as we're all in tune, or as we're all tuned, then the Holy Spirit's going to direct the worship anyway. We don't have to do anything. We don't have to say anything. You know, we just automatically stand and raise our hands. We just automatically, you know, because we already know the Holy Spirit's moving in our lives so, uh, and what he wants us uh, to do. The second one, we must create an atmosphere that brings honor to God. Unfortunately, many Christians today no longer have a grasp of bringing honor to God. Uh, we have stood by and allowed society to ignore and destroy our Judeo-Christian values that we find in the Bible, okay? That's why the society is such a wreck, okay? I mean, the, the evils that are going on out there are unprecedented in, in our existence as a country, okay? The stuff about abortion, the stuff about gay marriage, the stuff about all of those things that are flat out clearly in the Bible, okay? The enemy's come in and just making a mess of it out there. And again, we need to get back in charge of getting control of this country and getting it back to the Judeo-Christian values and the morals that we were built on. Because God has gifted and blessed this country, okay, in ways that are not even imaginable. All the bad stuff you hear, how crappy this country is, don't believe it. We have done more as a country because of our Judeo-Christian values than any other country in the world. And we still, today, we help more people. We bring in more immigrants. We, bring, we do more than anybody in the world today. No matter what you hear out there, just dismiss it. Say, no, that's not true. Because we are a great country because God has blessed this country unimaginably. And we need to start living like he's blessed it and start being that witness out there in the workplace, in our school, and say, now this is the greatest country that you could ever live in. And we're doing the things that God needs us to do. But we need to create an atmosphere that brings honor uh, to God. Problem is, is we become such a selfish people, it's something we have to turn around, okay? We become so inward, okay? We're all selfish. We become these selfish people because, again, the more human touch you, le you lose, Okay, the more selfish we become, the more inward uh, we become. But God needs to uh, change that around. If, all, if God, America can only get back to honoring God, uh, then it would change everything. Third one, we must create an atmosphere of expectancy and excitement. Again, it's exciting to come to church. We need to expect God to move in our services. It's not just going to happen. We need to expect it. We need to have an excitement when we get here. Say, man, God is here. God is going to move, and it's going to be awesome. Hallelujah. Okay, this is what it's going to take. It's not just going to happen by osmosis. That's not the way the Holy Spirit moves. He relies on us, again, to move him within us. Then he moves without, with outside of us. Amen? That's where it comes from. That's what we need to come with expectancy and excitement. Uh, I mean... I was reading the other day that, that if, if, if you knew for a fact that Jesus was going to be here next Sunday, you knew for a fact and you could convince the people he's going to be here next Sunday, what do you think this atmosphere would feel like? What do you think? It would be like crazy. You'd have people camping out outside. You'd have the whole city would just be a, I mean, I don't want, I don't want to go down that road. Uh, I'm gonna, I was going to yell at the Mustang morons, I'll call them that were down by Jack in the Box yesterday. There must have been about 50 of these Mustangs. Just idiot, punk kids, driving these things. They're out in the middle of the road. They're stopped. But it was just chaos. I'm going, what in the heck is going on here? And I cut the run over sign. And it was just bad. It was bad. But it was chaos. But it's one of those things that you're going to see more and more of. That say, God, we need to do something to turn that around. We need all those, those Mustangs in church. We need him in church, okay? That parking lot full of Mustangs. That'd be awesome. They're about 50. They're nice ones, too. They weren't the, the old ghetto cruiser type ones. They were, like, fixed up. Like, they had a lot of money into them and stuff. I mean, it obviously a club of some sort, but I don't know why they came to Lake Elsinore, but it really messed up the jack-in-the-box, that's for sure. Uh, but anyway, I mean, the guaranteed, they were excited to be there. 
But we need to create that expect the excitement also because, like I said, if we advertise that Jesus is going to be here, it'd be awesome. It'd be powerful. But guess what? That's right. Because if we are here, Jesus is here. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're all here because we're here. The churches should be full, overflowing, you would think, right? Because God, man, God is over at Elsinore Christian Center. Let's go. Right? He is. Yes, he is. Every time we're here, he's here. And that's why you need to start looking at it. We come, man, I can't wait till church tomorrow. God's going to be there. So uh, praise God and get things taken care of beforehand. Uh, but uh, again, they're all here waiting. The Holy Spirit, God the Son, God, they're waiting to feel this place with their presence and their power. They want to manifest that. They want to do, they want to do that because they love us. They want to see us healed. They want to see us delivered. They want to see all of those. They want to take care of all that stuff, but one person can't do it. It's going to take all of us as a group coming together as one, allowing the Holy Spirit to move and do what he needs to do, perform the miracles he needs to perform because we're all together on the same page. Uh, But, Here's another problem we have. To make that happen, uh, the Holy Spirit's going to need a lot more time to get the work done. Holy Spirit doesn't work in an hour chunk of time. He doesn't work that way. Okay? <laughs> as much as we want to constrain Him with time, it doesn't work. The, God, the Holy Spirit doesn't have, a, have any idea what time is. God doesn't know what time is. Jesus doesn't know what time is. But we got a real problem with time here in this country. We're so run by time that we're going from one thing to another to another. And it, that's where a lot of the chaos comes from because we're bound by the time that uh, we're held by from these awesome watches that we have now. Okay, I mean, right now it's like, it's 1140. How many people look at your watch in the last five minutes? Man, you've been talking a long time. It's 1140 already. I hope he finishes soon. <laughs> but you know what? We try to keep the services, but guess what? God may want to go for two hours. Three hours, four hours. Okay, what would you do if he did? Would you say, oh, God, I, it's, I'm a little bit busy. I've got something else i got to do. But the Holy Spirit wants you to stay here and say, God, I've got things to do. What should I do? God, i got to get down to the beach. <laughs> okay, the sun just coming out. God, should I stay or should I go? Now, I think, unfortunately, sadly, most people would just say, we'll get up and go. Okay, and not even give the Holy Spirit uh, time to move. I use the illustration of when we're in Zimbabwe. Their service doesn't last for an hour. They go on for hours and days. It's hours and days. It's like they're all night. They're all next day. People travel for miles and miles to come to these meetings. And so they have meetings all day long, all night long. All, I mean, uh, they must eat in shifts and stuff so they, they can just keep their strength up. But that's the way the Holy Spirit I mean, needs more time to actually move. And... Quite frankly, most of us aren't willing to give our time up, right? Because it's important. Time is important. It's basically because it dictates my life. I mean, I can't sit around here for 19 hours. I've got to work in the morning, right? Okay, but guess what? The Holy Spirit wouldn't mind. Fine, sit around. I'd love to have you around for 19 hours. Sit right here and I will do the work that I need to do in you. But again, uh, we need to create an atmosphere that moves beyond restraints of our time and our culture. Uh, again, just be careful we don't fall into these traps. Uh, again, I don't have my, my example because I said I better leave my cell phone in the other room because I'll be looking at it. Okay, cell phones are a horrible thing. Horrible, horrible invention. Okay, I think they're the work of the devil, to be honest with you. I mean, as productive as people think they are, I think they are the biggest time killers that we have in our society today. If you actually sit there and look at how much time you actually spend on your smartphone, okay, it's probably ridiculous. If I punch the clock every time, they should put a, they should come up with an app, okay? Let's see how much time I'm spending on my smartphone. I then mean, I'd pick it up and start clicking away time, and at the end of the day, it says, you spent 13 hours and 45 minutes on your smartphone. What a, how stupid are you? Because all that, guess what? Guess where that all comes from? It's going into your head, going into your brain, going into your... Okay, it's all coming from that smartphone. I mean, obviously, they're good for making phone calls. And if, oh, God forbid I have an emergency. What if I have an emergency? I got all these kids. I got to have a phone. What if there's an emergency? 
Okay, well, okay. Here's your brick. Here's the phone number. Here you go. Pick it up. Just dial it. It's all you need. Right? That's all you need. Just a phone. An actually can call. Okay, emergency solved. <laughs> call me if you have an emergency. Okay? But now it's like it, they use it for their homework. They use it for everything. It's like it's just, like I said, the time used on those things is just tremendous. Tremendous. So, again, uh, I mean, I have a cell phone, unfortunately. My work requires it, but uh, I'd probably have to have one, but I don't know. I don't want to talk about cell phones. You weren't going to ever get mad at me because, well, we all got cell phones. How many of you got a cell phone? You're right here. We all got a cell phone? All right. Praise the Lord. <laughs> use them smartly. That's all I'll say. <laughs> but don't use them for, uh, use them for good and not evil. Let's put it that way. Uh, anyway, so if we want to experience the power and presence of God in our lives, we, the church, must be prepared to move beyond the restraints of time and culture. We must not allow the world to dictate our values and schedules any longer. If we would only allow Jesus to set our agenda and be our timekeeper, we would experience a greater sense of his power and glory in our lives today. Everybody believe that? Yeah, you can say, yeah, it's all right. You know, even though I know we're hooked to him, we're tied to him, but we can do better at him. Spend a little bit less time on him. Even as five minutes, ten minutes, say, I'm not going to pick it up. Leave it, leave it at home every now and again. Leave it, just turn it off and not even use it. See how long you can go without it. That's a fast right there. How you know <laughs> I'm going to go on a 40-day fast, not using my cell phone. That's all I'm going to do. That would be awesome. God would do awesome things. With all that time, he's going to be able to have your attention. That would be awesome. So last one, uh, we must create an atmosphere that promotes uh, evangelism. Again, this is what our call is as a church, is evangelism. All right? That's really where we create to worship, right? To worship God and evangelize. All that stuff that happens in between, that's great. But all God say, worship me and evangelize. Tell all the world about me. Okay, but we have to begin to create an atmosphere for evangelism. We have to encourage you guys to invite people to church, to bring people in, so that these chairs are all filled. We've got a lot of chairs over. We could fit a couple hundred people in here, and we could have two or three, so we could go out and do all that stuff. But, uh, again, it takes us to, again, invite people into uh, the church. Amen? Uh, but holding the fort until his return is not a strategy to change the atmosphere. Okay, this is what a lot of the end times preaching, what it caused, is now people are so terrified, it's okay, we're just going to hold the fort until you come, Lord. We'll just be right here waiting, holding the fort down for you. Okay, when you're ready to come, but he's saying, no, I need you out there. I need you out. I don't need you in this building. He needs to be outside these doors uh, evangelizing uh, everywhere that I am. And that should be one of our main calls is evangelizing and bringing people to Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, in closing, uh, I just believe that all these strategies are important uh, if we want to create an atmosphere of change in our spiritual lives. Uh, however, if we just focus on the worship and evangelism parts, I believe we would be restoring honor to God that he wants us to bring back. He wants us to wor be better worshipers. He wants us to be better at evangelism. Okay, so if we just focus on those two strategies mainly, uh, I think this would birth an expectancy and excitement to move beyond the restraints of time in our culture. Again, this is all spiritual stuff that has to take place before we can put down our time and to figure all this stuff out. The Holy Spirit has to move on each of our hearts. He has to be the one that dictates our lives, dictates our time. We have to allow him to do that because he's not going to do it automatically. Okay, he's not going to do it automatically. He's not going to push himself on you and say, you better give me more time today or I'm going to, you know, I'm not going to talk to you all day. It's not the way God works. We need to make sure that we are allowing the Holy Spirit to dictate our everyday lives. Uh, that we create ex excitement to move beyond the restraints of time and culture. All these working in concert with our efforts to keep our temples clean and in order for the Holy Spirit can only help us be more successful at changing the atmosphere in our hearts, our homes, and our churches in 2019. Amen? Let's stand. Let's close in prayer. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Give the Lord a hand for his word this morning. And all I can say is, Holy Spirit, make it real to each and every one of us, Father. In Jesus' name, Lord, we just thank you, Father, for this day, Father. Thank you for the worship time, Father. Thank you for changing the atmosphere, Father, in this place, in our hearts, Father. We just thank you, Father, that you're with us every step of the way, Father. Help us to be the people that you need us to be, Father. 
every single day, Father, so that you are being glorified in our lives. We just thank you for this time. Thank you for all that you brought here this morning, Father. Bless their day. Bless the rest of this week, Father. And just uh, we just look forward to bringing you, Holy Spirit, back to church next week again so that we can worship you in Jesus' name. Amen. If any of you guys need prayer or anything, uh, Pastor Glenn and myself will be up here. Better than that, have an awesome week. And don't lose sight of the Holy Spirit because guess what? He's right here inside of you every step of the way.